Good afternoon, boys and girls, and thank you for tuning in to episode 81 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilace, coming to you today from YouTube. Wherever you are, I hope you're well. Please tell me where you are. Uh, please say hello, leave a comment, ask a question. I'm going to do the usual thing, first of all, by starting with making sure that things are coming through loud and clear. It, 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 yeah, it looks as though we're all right. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. Please give this video a like. Uh, please tell, tell other fellow perfume lovers about it. And we will get on with um, smelling a perfume straight away because we are doing another single brand uh, episode today, another best of episode. And today I am going to be doing my top seven and Perhaps I'll explain why I decided to go for seven. Top seven from none other than Serge Lutens. Um, when I did my Frederick Mal video, um, or before I did my Frederick Mal video a few days ago, I should say, I put it out there on Instagram asking people which brand they thought I was going to do. Interestingly, Frederick Mal came out as the number one brand that people thought I was going to do, but Lutens was probably in second place, and I thought, well, actually, it's probably time I did Lutens. So let's, let's see who's managed to get in with some hellos before we start with um, some smelling. Who gets the first comment today? Anne Kalhar gets the first comment with saying, hi, hello to you as well. Hi from Yorkshire, says right, Glory BG. Uh, good afternoon, Q George. Howdy from Athens, says Ilya Yasu. Talking Sense has loves Lut love Lutans. Looking forward to hearing your opinions on these. And actually, yes, Lutans is a brand, much like Frederick Mal, actually, that that um, generates a lot of uh, a, a lot of passion. You know, that people people are not um, not lukewarm about Lutans. So feel free to tell me what some of your favourites are as well. If you can come up with like maybe a, a top three, if each of you could do a top three Lutans, it would be interesting to see what they are. Uh, uh, Frederick, hello again to you as well. Hi from Berlin, says Evo. Forever fragrant kid. Uh, let's try that again. Forever fragrant kid. Thank you very much for tuning in. Shimon says hello. Uh, Chang, bonjour from Paris. Umberto, hello. Dominic, French music. That's a cool avatar. Good afternoon. Good night from Indonesia, says Fahmi. Linz smells is here as well. This is like... Actually, I, I, I need to sort of say, because I, I, I told myself this morning while I was setting up that... that um, I need to do this. I have to say a very, very special thank you. Obviously, thank you to all of you who are tuning in live and thank you those of you who are watching the recording. I've, I've said this before and, and I'll probably say it again. The vast, vast, vast majority of you watch the recording. So thank you very much for that. But a special thank you to all of the people who seem to be able to tune in live to every single episode. Um, I really, really appreciate that. It makes us feel as though we've kind of got this trans-global gang of perfume lovers that get together. I'm, I'm really, really touched by the fact that, that you do that. And there is this, this growing hardcore of you who seem to be doing it with every single episode. I'm, I'm really, really gratified. Um, no, I'm not gratified. I'm grateful. It's gratifying. Right, get, get, the, the, get the word right. Um, uh, David says hello from San Francisco. Sonic, Sonic 69. Sonic says it had to be Lutens, one of my favorite brands. Still haven't smelled any in the bell jar range, says Q George. Ooh, interesting. Catherine, morning from New Mexico, my favorite Lutens. Um, I'm, I'm, I could spend the whole episode reading comments. We are going to, I'm, I'm going to stop at a certain point and then we'll get on with some smelling. Evo says it's such a shame that the only uh, Lutens I own is La Sondière. Interesting. Fahmi says, I've tried Participe Passé recently and it's fantastic. Okay, well, I can tell you now it's not in the top seven. The Purcell Ace top seven. Mystery Form says hello from West Coast, Canada. Fantastic. Talking Sense, my top three. Okay, here we go. Vetiver Oriental, uh, Baptême du Feu and L'Orpheline. L'Orpheline is not such an amazing scent, I think, but it is very moving and evocative. I seem to remember thinking that it was moving as well when I reviewed it on the blog. Umberto says that he's wearing Ombre Russe. Po Poesia28, hello again from Latvia, hi. Serapio says, I try, I try to be here every episode and it's definitely appreciated. Gino, yay, I caught the live, hello from Singapore. Uh, Serapio again says, hello from Denver, Colorado. Hi from Zurich, says Teresa. Asta says, L'Orpheline is one that started my love for perfume. Wow, amazing, so excited for this video. 
Eric says hello from Houston again. David says, okay, we've got another top three. Would be Ambre Sultan, Fi, oh, I can't say that, Fi en, en aiguille, you know, the, the pine one, and Tuberos Criminel. There's going to be lots of annoyed people at the end of this top seven, I think. Ilya says, just sprayed a la nuit to get in the mood. Lisa says, hi, I was given Holy Peony Batman. <laughs> recently and I have to say I love it fair enough that's a reference to a Dior video we did a little while ago Pine Rock says hi I'm getting hooked on your live streams another house I want to get into well this is a healthy thing to get hooked into I think uh, thank you for a great channel thank you very much for watching Lisa hello Uncle P says Reza <laughs> fine I, I've been called many things before my favorite is probably Iris Silver Mist says Sonic uh, hello from Belleville Ontario Canada uh, uh, top three from Shimon, Borneo, Amber Sultan, and Gris Claire. Um, and Aperol says, Frederick Mal and now Serge Lutens, this is too much. And we'll do this as the last comment and then we'll do some smelling. Reza says, I don't have a list for this brand as I have never tried any except Cherki and Baptem. Okay, we should do some smelling. Right. Um, uh, very, very quickly then, why seven? Because I thought, okay, I, I can't just keep turning these into, into top tens. And I have to say that I don't personally think that the Lutin's output is as consistently of the same high standard as Mal. With Frederick Mal, I really, really, really could not have done a top five because there are so many scents that I love in that brand. So I thought I could do a, a, a top ten. Um, with Lutin's, I thought five might be a bit mean because because they do have so many. So we've gone for seven as a kind of compromise because I thought it might be kind of defeating the object of exclusivity if I go for 10. Interestingly, I always base my uh, best ofs, you know, way back when I was doing the Supercent lists on Persolase.com, I always base my list on what happens to be in that particular brand's catalog at this given moment in time, as in the moment when I make the list. So I went on the Lutin's website and I was surprised by a few things that, that aren't there anymore. I know that they had a they had a cull, they had a reshift of various things when they did the rebrand, you know, when they changed the bottles, when they did the the really, really seriously overpriced gold collection, when they did, um, uh, because what have they got? Yes, when, when they took some of the, the lighter scents and called them the, 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 you know, the waters of politeness. So a few things have obviously gone by the wayside. So today is what, the 16th of April, 2020. So this this top seven is based on what happened to be listed as part of the catalogue on the Serge Lutin's website um, you know, yesterday when I when I finalised the list. And with that massive preamble, I think we should smell. And I think we'll get the obvious one out of the way first, but I'm being a bit naughty because this is the form in which I'm going to present it to you today. So you don't really know which one this is. I can't believe the price of those gold series, says Jeremy. Yeah, I know, I know. And by the way, keep the comments coming. What we'll do is we'll smell, we'll read, we'll smell, we'll read and chat, and, and it'll probably make sense to do it that way. This is, this is how I happen to have in my personal collection, rather than Madame Persolet's in her collection. This is the form in which I have Ambre Sultan. I think we have to start with this because this is, this is the obvious one. This has long been um, what I consider to be one of the best Lutins. And I suppose if I had to choose one single one, it, it would have to be this because this, this is the quintessential Lutins in a way. It wasn't, it wasn't the first. Uh, this came out in 1993. Um, been around, obviously, for qu quite a while. But, I mean, not, not only do I think it's, it's, it's an amazing fragrance, you know, superb piece of work and probably... Um, one of the best modern ambers, if not the best. I talked about it um, not that long ago, actually, when I did a video of the perfumes that I most enjoy smelling on uh, on Madame Persolet. So, so some of you will have heard this already. Um, where, where should where should we pop this? The the the, the vapor. What do they call it? The vapor tout noir. Um, it it's. It's, there is just nothing wrong with this perfume. I don't. I don't think it is. It is absolutely flawless from from start to finish. Um, again, very very quickly for those who may not be aware, amber is is uh, is, a, is a perfumery construct. Believe it or not, I have had a few conversations over the years with people where I tried to tell them that no, it is not some kind of an oil or liquid that is. Um, that is that is extracted from you know from the, the resin that you make you know like Baltic amber and things like that. Um, it is a perfumery construct. It is a blend. That is that is that is pure and simple what it is. 
and depending on who you talk to, depending on what you read, uh, you, you, you may find that the sort of basic ingredients for the, the blend that we call amber is vanilla, lactanum and benzoin. Some people would say that it has to contain patchouli as well. Um, and then, the, so, so on that basic accord, in the same way that a sheep has a, has a basic accord, you can build all sorts of uh, uh, amazing things. It's, it's an accord that lends itself to lots of twists, to lots of variations, to lots of iterations. Um, as we can see from the fact that it's been around for a very long time, you know, it's the accord that is there, that it was there in Cotis Emerald, that is still there in, in, in Garlin's Chalimar. Um, various amber bases have been made by perfumery houses over the years and over the decades, and, and different ones are used by different brands. But I, st I still think that th th this, is, this is probably my favorite modern amber. A lot of people would say that, that their favorite one is Andy Towers' uh, L'Air du Désert Mar Marocain. Again, a superb example. But, but if you know what those smell like, then, then you, you get a sense of what, what we mean when we say an amber scent. I like this one because I love its, 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 its dry, dusty, herbal quality. It, it, it tells the story of a, of a very gorgeously parched landscape, you know, where if you, um, uh, 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 you know, you're sort of walking on wood that, that is so dry, it kind of crackles into pieces um, as, you're, as you're stepping across it and this, and this beautiful smelling dust is thrown up into the air all around you. And yet there is an oasis here as well, because amber, what with the fact that it contains vanilla, benzoin, is, is a very, very rich, very sweet, very welcoming, very enveloping um, blend, uh, accord, um, and 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 that that's why that's that that's why this always stops me dead in my tracks. And also, it's it's the um, it's the first Lutens I ever smelt. I was a little bit late to the uh, Lutens story because I suppose as a brand, maybe I've been aware of it only, maybe only for about. 20 years. I mean, I say only. It, it, the, the very first Lutin scent under the Shiseido banner, of course, came out a long time ago. It's a scent that isn't available anymore. But Lutin's, as, as we know the brand now, with Femi Tidjibois Dubois and, and, um, uh, and Ambo Sultan, is a sort of early 90s scent. But I didn't really get into it until, until probably about 20 years ago. And, and it was in a very, very mainstream sort of shop that I walked into and there was this sort of Lutin's display and I thought well this is interesting I quite like this imagery what's this all about and it was the name that I that I found appealing about this one it was the first one I smelled and Madame Persolaise was there and we both sort of looked at each other and did this kind of ooh we think we like this and um, and we have ever since I think the brand's most recent output has left me feeling a, li a little bit more indifferent Mind you, having said that, Couche du Diable, hang on, say that again, Couche du, was it du Diable or du Diable? No, it must be du, I suppose, I don't know. From last year, the, the devil one from last year. That, I thought, uh, was very, very good. And I do like some of the lighter things that they have done. Uh, of course, the Serge Lutin's press release is always worth a chuckle or two. So, number one to start us off, six to go. Let's see what comments I've missed. Uh, and I should also give a very, very quick mention of the ones that... Um, didn't make it into my top seven, but perhaps we'll do that in a sec. Uh, oh my goodness, there, there are so many comments. Um, right, here we go. Christine says, Iris Silver Mist, Muscoublai Khan and Borneo is, is your top three. Good morning from Seattle, says Sabra. Thanks for tuning in. Talking Sense, that's a great list, Christine. Yeah, absolutely agreed. Uh, Yulia says, my favorite brand. Thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in. Jeremy says, I can't believe the price of... Oh, no, we've talked... Yeah, no, the, the gold ones are... The gold ones actually, I think, are silly expensive, really, if you ask me. Q George, top three from what I have tried. Fille on Aiguille, um, Rose de Nuit and Tuberose Criminelle. Uh, Queer Moresque and Kublai Khan, Muscoublai Khan come really, really close. Oh, okay, so I should say now that actually, as we're going through this, maybe I need to do this. Absolutely the pine one. I love Fille en Aiguille. It's not in the top seven. Rose de Nuit, beautiful, beautiful rosy sheep. Not in the top seven. Tuberose Criminel, fantastic tuberose. Not in the top seven. Queer Moresque as well. I really love it as a leather. Not in the top seven. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Aperol says the Serge Lutin's travel bottle. Yeah, absolutely. Forever Fragrant Kid agrees that Ambre Sultan is great. Uh, reference Amber for sure, says Jeremy. 100% agree, says Talking Sense. One of the best Ambers. 
Rachel says, I was here and no one was. Doe. What do you mean? There's loads of people. You're not alone. Um, Tomasz says, hello from Katowice. What a nice collection of books. Yeah, thank you very much. Gino says, uh, Lowe was my first lieutenant. Okay, interesting place to start. Then fell down the Uncle Serge hole, so to speak. Uh, from Chergy, really love it. Not in the top seven. Five o'clock au gingembre, bois musc, couche du diable, fille de Berlin, fantastic cold rose. Not in the top seven. It's hard to stop. But if, by process of elimination, you'll be able to work out what is in the top seven. Bon dia from Brazil says, Fernando, thank you very much for tuning in. Julia says, Fille de Berlin, de profundis, uh, au voie noir, bas de vanille, l'eau, vierge de fer, vitriol d'oeil, oh, for a non-French speaker trying to say some of these names. And of course, Chergui, hi from Oman, says Jojo, thanks for tuning in. Um, did, you, did you try making some pavlova? Uh, Abdel Sanke says, hello, hola from Puerto Rico. Amr Sultan and Tuberos Criminel are two lieutenants that I adore, says Right Glory. Well, at least you've had one of them here. Uh, Ilya, Amr Sultan is such a cosy scent to me. It was the first lieutenants I've ever tried. Yes, it's cosy, but it's also huge. I mean, it is, it is, it is, it's an epic movie smell, you know. It, it's like English patient landscape smell. The most intriguing lieutenants for me is De Profundis, but I've yet to smell it. Uh, I've only read, oh, so as in you're intrigued by the idea of it. You should smell it. You might find it interesting. Jojo says, I find that many people hate amber because they're associated with ambergris, or at least I used to, but now it's one of my favorite notes in perfumes. Interesting. Uh, Fernando says, Boy Musk is going to be on your list. Um, no. Actually, I wonder if I even saw that on the Lutin's web. Is it still there? Orange Blossom is in your top seven, says Reza. How is their Vetti there? Orange, orange is not in the top seven. I should stop telling you what's not in the top seven. I've been meaning to try Sarasin, but can't get hold of a sample in London, says Denby. You will, you know, you will struggle to get it in London because because Sarasin is, is, is just a, um, an either online only or a Paris boutique exclusive only. And I think I think there's a there's a there's a there's a USA outlet that that has some of the um, Paris exclusives. Uh, Reza says, scent of the day, Dettol Pine. <laughs> you smell great. <laughs> I adore à la nuit, says Aperol Spritz. Jojo, I noticed that many amber-based perfumes have this distinctive Coke scent, which I find very enjoyable. I'm guessing you mean Coca-Cola, right? Because if you do, then it's vanilla. Um, cinnamon vanilla. Mystery Forms, currently in search of Lutin's jasmine compositions, à la nuit and Sarasin as well. Ashvark is saying hello, thanks for tuning in. My scent of the day is Santal Majuscule, Sniffy Sniff. Really, really love that. Not in the top seven. That one smells really good on Madame Persolet's. Uh, talking scent, Sarasin is a nightmare to get, but it sounds amazing. Um, this is the hardest to guess, says Gino, because too many... Yeah, absolutely. I should do another one. What about Serge Lutin's Fleur d'Oranger? Is it in your top seven, says Tomash. Uh, Frédéric Chevalier, by dint of hearing so often about Madame Persolaise, I began to imagine that it was your stage name with a wig and too much makeup. You can never have too much makeup, can you? I'm, I'm, there's no such thing as too much makeup, is there? Um, she, I can assure you she exists. She is just very, very Greta Garbo. She has no interest in this, whatever. She, think, she, th she thinks that whatever her husband gets up to in this room with the bottles is, is just some folly. Um, she, she prefers the real world to the virtual world, but we connect over perfume. Um, Thanks for tuning in, by the way. Uh, Reza says, I get Coca-Cola from Lush, Rentless, and uh, Roger's Enigma. I have to stop because otherwise uh, she is invisible, says Ashwa. She's not invisible. She just exists in the real world. <laughs> let's do another one. Okay, actually, speaking of her, let's do another obvious one because those of you who watched some of the videos, uh, or one of the videos that I did previously, will be aware that this has got to be in the top seven as well. And if I do this then you will remember that it's the same bottle that you saw, I think, a couple of weeks ago, that the label has come off. And, of course, the one and only Féminité Dubois um, had to be here. Oh, drop a blotter, fine. Um, from, 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 from uh, 1992, made by Pierre Bourdon and Christopher Sheldrake. Really, really very highly regarded um, by other perfumers. You know, if you, if you ask a lot of um, perfumers what is one of their favorite modern compositions or what's a perfume that they wish they had made themselves. They go for Féminité du Bois. I think I'm pretty sure, if memory serves, when I interviewed Frederick Mal or was when I was in one of these sort of, you know, an audience with Frederick Mal um, sessions, somebody may have asked him um, what is the perfume that he wished 
had been made for his brand. And I'm pretty sure he, he said Feminita Dubois. He rates Lutins as a brand very, very highly. I think he has a lot of respect for what, for what the brand has done. And this is... This is absolutely one of my favourites on Madame Persolet's, whether whether I am wearing too much makeup or not. Um, actually, can you imagine me in a wig? The hair at the moment is looking a little bit too much like a wig, but never mind, I won't go there. Um, this is, I think in my last video, I called it posh potpourri, and I meant that as, as the most sincere compliment, because it has all of the materials that make potpourri great, so, you know, it's... Um, uh, nutmeg, cinnamon, vanilla, berry notes, um, of course, uh, sort of floral violety notes, woody notes, bark, tree bark, tree moss, and yet it is presented in such an elegant way. I mean, this is... This is... This is, this is still, I think, one of Lutens's, um finest statements, if not his finest statement, on, uh, on, on a kind of stereotype, a notion, an ideal of um, European sophistication, of European chic. Ambre Sultan is, is, is very much this thing of the West travelling to the East, the West being fascinated by the East, the West bringing back from the East the things that it loves so much about the East. In, in, in the little teaser that I did for this episode, um, I kind of cheekily uh, used the, um, when the teaser that I did on Instagram, I should say, I cheekily used the music from Lawrence of Arabia because I thought of the parallels between Lutens himself as a man and Lawrence of Arabia. This guy who, who you know, who goes to the East and is fascinated by the East um, and, and then gets completely seduced by it and, and spends most of his time there. I mean, as, as you will be aware, Lutens himself uh, spends most of his time in, in Marrakesh, but not interestingly, in this super famous, super mysterious house that he, he has had built there. Apparently his own dwellings are relatively modest. But this, this, this gorgeous house that I think uh, is in the Medina um, is, 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 is a place that you, you, you visit and you leave. So it's been put together, uh, and, I, and I say this having spoken to somebody who's been there, you, you go there and, and it's been put together by some of the finest artisans in, in that part of the world, you know, beautiful woodwork, beautiful marble, etc. But, but you just look at it and, and admire it from a distance and, and then you leave. And apparently Lutens himself doesn't live there. Um, so, so Ambre Sultan is, is his, 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 his love poem to, to the East or to North Africa. Femnita Dubois, I think, is his love poem to some kind of idealized European, and I guess it has to be said, maybe specifically French sophistication, French femininity, um, that that supremely sort of detailed um, and yet seemingly effortless chic. So we've got those two out of the way. For the remaining five, as this is a top seven, um, we, we, some of them, some of them, you know, you, maybe you're expecting, maybe you won't be expecting. Um, comments, comments, comments. Uh, where did we get to? Um, <laughs> I bet there's going to be some Madame Persolet's comments now. I'm very interested in Iris Silver Mist, says Hugo, since it's a Maurice Roussel creation. I like his work a lot. So do I. Uh, Catherine's top three is Fille en Aiguille. Oh, you really love that one. Okay, interesting. Fille de Berlin and La Mire. Okay, Fernando says it's there. Okay, I missed the thread of that. Um, Shimon says, on a serious note, how much is too much perfume? Not possible. <laughs> uh, Denby says, I'll bet you've got Femme du Dubois or one of the flankers in the top seven. Well, there you go, the one itself. Arkandiush says, off topic, I hope to see you do a modern vetiver list soon, also a review of vetiver frozen by Garlin. Gosh, you know, I think I have got a bottle of vetiver frozen or frozen vetiver. Sniffy sniff. Feminité du Bois reminds me of Dr. Pepper, so I get the cola reference. Okay. Jeremy says, I had no idea Pierre Bourdon had a hand in Feminité du Bois. Uh, forever, fragrant kid, uh, forever Fragrant Kid agrees that it's lovely. S. Murphy says, hi from Edinburgh. Thank you very much for tuning in. The new home of its own Chanel fragrance. Okay. Have I missed something? <laughs> 
Uh, Umberto says, Pierre Bourdon and Christopher Sheldrake, what can go wrong? Talking Sense says, Femme Thierry Dubois sounds amazing. Swerved that one in the past. <gasps> we'll keep an eye out in the future. What's your opinion on Serge Noir, says Shimon. Haven't smelt it for a while, but I always remember being quite impressed with it. It's not in the top seven, but again, that, that I remember being finding that quite powerful, quite, quite, um, that, that, that was a real sucker punch, that one. Okay, so I want to try the Shiseido version. I hear it's a bit more hefty, says Denby. Uh, well, you, you, you can sometimes find some. I, I, if I have tried the Shiseido version ever, it's been a long time. Top 10 vetiver of Madame, P presented by Madame Persele, says Ashfaq. Not going to happen. Paris Edinburgh, says Umberto. Ah, I did not know this. Did not notice. Right, let, let's let's move on. I need to contact. I need to contact Chanel. I'm finding it interesting that brands are still going ahead with new releases. I would have thought that everything would just kind of be put on hold now. Um, but but anyway, I guess some parts of the world are still shopping. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Let's do another one where the label has come off. Okay. This is again from Madame Persolaise's collection. It was a, a gift to to her from from her fondest admirer, um, when he was wearing a lot of makeup. Um, the, it's really really mean asking you um, asking you to guess this one, but this is it's been it's been mentioned it's been mentioned before. I love the way that Lutens handles Jasmine, and maybe this is one that is going to take some people by surprise. But this is um, A La Nuit from, from uh, this one is, 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 is a Christopher Sheldrake one from the year 2000. We need to get some labels here, don't we? Because a lot of these are not. And I know, ooh, have we got this right? Yes. It's always difficult knowing how to angle these. Okay. It is, it, it is, um, You know, it has to be said, this is pretty much a kind of jasmine solly floor. Um, and, and, and for the, you know, for the two of you out there who may not be aware, a solly floor perfume is what we call a perfume which just attempts to present a single flower note. So, so it's not a sort of particularly symphonic, layered, textured composition. It basically sort of says, look, this is my take on rose, or this is my take on, I don't know, freesia. And in this case, à la nuit, is a take on uh, Jasmine. There is another Solly Floor that I nearly nearly made it into my top seven here because I love it so much, and that's uh, Saint Majeste La Rose. I'd, again, a lot of people dismiss it as being quite simplistic, but um, I'd, I'd show me another rose that's like it, that it, that is precisely like it. You know, I go for to different roses when I want different things, but I, when I want just the simplicity and the purity of rose. Uh, and the simplicity of the beauty of Rose, I go to Samage de la Rose. And the same with uh, Jasmine and, and A la Nuit. It's, it's, it's properly indolic and mothball-y. It's, it's got that right suggestion of the sort of slight banana note that you get from some Jasmines. It goes in the ylang ylang direction. It's got that white floral largeness. You know, you can see how if it had more claws, then it would... Um, you know, start turning into tuberose if it had more claws and if it was a bit more sort of coconutty. Um, but everything is is just it, it, it is just note perfect in this, and and it, and it works tremendously on skin, and it also works tremendously, I think, on hair. There is there is something about white floral garlands. I mean, in the Frederick Mal video that I did when we were talking about carnal flower, I mentioned. Um, uh, tuberose garlands uh, in um, in India, and of course you can also make jasmine garlands that you can you can wear as uh, as hair pieces. Um, and this has got the, the, there's something beautifully innocent about them, and and somehow wonderfully clean. You know, this is a very very clean. M vibrant, fresh sort of jasmine. And I always find it interesting to think that it's called à la nuit, because, okay, jasmine smells more strongly in, in the night, but there is something about this that is very sort of first thing in the morning, or, or maybe maybe we could sort of imagine it just that moment when the final, the, the final rays of darkness 
have settled and, and the sun starts to rise. Um, I've, I've, I've always, always, always loved it. Um, one time it was sprayed in a kind of perfume event we were doing and I didn't even recognize it. I was just sort of smelling thinking, wow, this is really good jasmine, I love this. And then somebody said, this is Lutanza's Al Anui. And I thought, what, really? Um, so that's, num that's number three, that's number three. Maybe a little bit too um, simplistic a choice for some, but, uh, but I think simplicity is, uh, is, is hard to, to do well. Um, right, missed lots and lots of comments. I do appreciate the interaction. I, I didn't know about the Chanel Paris Edinburgh, but but I, I will see if I can seek it out at some point. Gris Claire is going to make it, right, says Fernando. Not in the top seven, sorry. Uh, Khadija says, hello from Indonesia. Thank you for tuning in, Khadija. I admire all your reviews. That's very kind, thank you. As I admire Sage Lutin's perfume, could you choose the best flower note space from this house? Maybe, maybe maybe I could do another video on just the best florals from Lutens. Do you know how hardcore do you handle your bottles? All your labels have come off. This is Madame Persolace. This is not me. The, the, all my labels are fine, as you will as you will soon discover, because the rest are the rest are from my collection. Uh, Jeremy says, unfortunately, here in Canada, the new Garland Patchouli Ardent launch will likely be. Oh, Patchouli Ardent launch will likely be pushed back. Okay. Shimon says, maybe it's a kind of lipstick effect in crisis. Oh, as in buying lipsticks. Potentially. Aperol says, Alain Louis is no longer part of the export line. What a shame. I know a lot of them have moved around, haven't they? Hello from Croatia, says Mr. Frangipani. Sa Majesté La Rose is so pretty, says Forever Fragrant Kid. Absolutely. Greetings from Athens, says Sava Siasu. Uh, Sniffy Sniff says, can anyone confirm if the new bottles are reformulated at all? Pfft, good question. I don't know. Ilya says, yay, Alain Louis is one I sprayed to put me in this top seven mood. Yeah, I thought of you when I read that comment. To me, it is a perfume with elegant austerity. I get the same feeling with Piguet's Bondi. I never wear it, but appreciate it. Ashfaq says, I know, I'm expected. Musk, Kublai Khan, Arabi, Lamir, Sarasin, Fumery Turc, and Tuberose Criminel are there too. Denby says, I think Borneo 1834 might be my favorite Lutins from what I've tried. Very unique and uncompromising type of scent. That was the one over which I agonized the most, probably. It's not in the top seven. I adore it. I also... Um, don't have a sample. It's one that I keep meaning to get. And of course, now they've put it in the, um, it's in the, what do they call it? The skyscraper range, the Grat Ciel. And of course they doubled the price. And I thought, oh, really, you know, uh, but that is one I would, the, 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 the thing that stopped me from putting it in the top seven is that for the sort of per fragrance it is, I think I still prefer Chanel's Coromandel, but, but Borneo is, is gorgeous. Just, just such a fantastic patchouli. Um, where did we get to? Luffy303 says, to me, Lutans are the organic, whole food, plant-based type of scents. I'm a huge fan and have most bell jars and many of the exports. Wow. Lolita says, hello. Peggy says, just caught you at the halfway mark. Sorry I'm late. Well, we used the Peggy board at the beginning, but you're more than welcome. Jojo says, I love Alanui. It's on my list once I run out of my Jasmine Marzipan by Lancôme, which I found almost identical to it. Okay. Lolita says, I would love to know your opinion about uh, Nuit de Cellophan by Serge Lutens. Um, it's not in the top seven, so we won't be talking about it today. Hello from Boston, says Click Click. Uh, Luffy again, among my faves are Chiros Criminel, Cuimoresque. Iris Silver Mist, Fumerie Turc, Borneo 1832, Sarasin, Muscoblai Khan, very, very oriental. Greetings from The Hague. Thanks for tuning in. Coin Paradise says, love is what we need in difficult times. Absolutely. Jonathan has made it. Uh, Mr. Frangipani's top seven would be Araby, Borneo, Fumerie Turc, Quimoresk, Iris Silver Mist, Muscoblai Khan, and JDP, uh, je, je, je peux, is that right? Okay, and Yulia, oh, I forgot L'Orpheline and the Baptême Noir, absolutely love it. For me, Maestro Serge Lutens is niche with a human face. So atmospheric, nothing compares. I prefer Borneo to Coromandel, to be honest, says Eric, fair enough. And is Datura Noir on your sniffing list today, Peggy asks. Not in the top seven, on which note we should move on because we have only done three, so we're at the halfway mark. We're at the halfway mark. Ooh. Well, it's, it's been mentioned loads and loads of times, so let's do this one. And this is when I very, very proudly bring out one of my bell jars. And this is, this is the majestic, 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 um, oh so moving and also very, very austere and, and somehow very, very sad Iris Silver Mist from 1994, composed by Maurice Roussel. Um, you know, no exaggeration at all when I say that this must be one of the finest, uh, let's get this out, Iris compositions 
ever, ever, ever. I mean, it's 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 just you can't think of very many scents that do what this one does with iris better. Um, and if you like iris, if you love iris, but you've never managed to smell this, you need you need to um, get your hands on this. And again, I I really because because I suppose I'm you know over and above every anything I'm a writer not just of perfume stuff but you know just a writer and and um, and I try to write fiction I love names and I love I love titles you know I love it when a movie is particularly well titled I love it when a song is well titled and I really really um love it when a perfume is well named and Iris Silver Mist is it's, I could not think of a better name for this because I mean Okay, obviously it's it's iris. There's something the assonance in there is beautiful as well. You know, iris silver mist is is fantastic. It's it's been named by somebody who really really appreciates the nuances of the English language. I wonder if if you know a, a, a proper English speaker um, had ha, had a hand in naming it. So so the iris, yes, fair enough. The fact that it's silver is spot on. Because even though it contains that kind of carroty top note, aldehydic carrot seed top note that you expect from an iris perfume, even though it's woody, um, even though there are, there are hints of other florals in there, you know, maybe maybe a hint of something jasmine-like. The the overriding color, the overriding tone is is silver. Um, is it is it at the beginning of Hamlet? That I think somebody describes the, the 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 ghost as 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 having a, the ghost of Hamlet's father as having a silver beard, um, and in a lot of productions of Hamlet, for some reason, the the ghost is shown in a silvery sheen, and there is something of a sort of ghostliness about about the, the, the silver of this. I mean, if, 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 if I were playing Hamlet, I absolutely would want to be wearing Iris Silver Mist. Because then we also get to the mist part of it. Be there, is, there is something slightly opaque about it. It's not a fog, you know, it's not completely impenetrable. You can see through a mist, but there is something there. There is, there is, a, there is a texture that you have to work your way through. Um, and it it is silvery. It's you know maybe mercury coloured. It's um, there is a pepperiness always that comes out of, through this as well that I really really enjoy. It's, it's no question, no question, one of the best iris compositions ever. And it's it 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 speaks of of mourning and of passing and of death, and it has a kind of ghostly funereal um aspect to it as well and yet it, it's it's so romantic and i keep thinking of hamlet because you know hamlet hamlet is as, as a play is completely obsessed with death and yet in some ways it's also shakespeare's most most romantic as, as and a sort of doomed romance um with the whole relationship between hamlet and ophelia and everything you know it, it I would I would just have to scent the theatre completely with 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 Iris Silver Mist if I were doing a production of Hamlet. It's it's ghosts side by side with 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 the, with the living. Just 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 perfect. So let's do some comments and then we will be on the last three. And actually, we need to get a move on because we're almost at the forty minute mark. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. My fragrance unicorn says talking sense. There you go. I love Iris Silver Mist, says Eric. Iris Silver Mist is to die for, says Aperol Spritz, the carroty iris. How do those jars work? You have to dab with that big thing. Basically, yes, but what I have done in the past is just I've sort of kept decanting into little spray bottles because I do I do love the, the, the diffusion of a, of a spray. And I've also got Iris Silver Mist in one of these guys. Uh, so yeah, they, they look wonderful, but mm, perhaps not the most practical application. Uh, love the bell jar, says Gino. Uh, Frederic Chevalier, Iris Silver Mist, oh yes, hit me. <laughs> Does that work for you? Uh, Denby says, for me, Borneo Coromandel, L'Instant de Garlin pour Homme, or Extreme, are all just different points along that cacao patchouli spectrum. I love them all. Yeah, I wore L'Instant de Garlin for years and years and years and years. Absolutely loved it. 
Oh, it's live, says Vahush. Yes, we're here. Chang says, could you please compare Iris Silver Mist with Oris Tattoo of Parlement de Parfum? Ooh, I'd have to go back to that. I would have to go back to that one. Sorry, I'd need to, I'd need to have it to think about that one a little bit. Arkadiusz says, my guess about what's in the top seven. Okay, well, I'll look at it later because we've only got three to go. Uh, so asking questions about which one I was doing. It seems there are a few Lutin's creations that evoke melancholy and funeral, says Ilya. Yeah, good point, actually. Very, very, very good point. Uh, Eric says, I like wearing Iris Silver Mist in the heat of summer. So refreshing. Interesting. Beautiful analogy, says Forever Fragrant Kit. Thank you very much. Hamlet is a play I know and, and very well and really, really love. So lots and lots of things make me think of Hamlet. Which one would you say fits with King Lear, says Ashfaq? Oh, I'd have to get back to you on that one. Uh, uh, Jeremy's favourites, Ombre Sultan, Femmeté du Bois, A la Nuit, and Iris Silver Mist. Oh, no, sorry. You're just saying which ones we've done. Yeah, okay. Thank you. I guess for somebody else's benefit. I would love to meet someone who wears Iris Silver Mist regularly, says Denby. Can't envision what type of person it would be, though. Interesting. Um, Ashfaq says, you are loaded with Iris Silver Mist, Mr. Pooh. Yeah, I do love it. I do love it. Eric says, my friend picked up a bell jar for me after our high school graduation on her trip to Paris. I treasure it still. Is this in no particular order, asked Mr. Frangipani. Yeah, it, 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 almost always I do these best ofs in no particular order. Why top seven, Serge Lutens? Is it to do with the Illuminati, says Dream of Me No More. <laughs> Okay. Um, King Lear is the pine one, says Dream of Me. Ah, the daughter reference. Very good. This is why I have the best audience in the world. You know your Shakespeare. Okay, let's move on. Let's do another one in the sort of regular bottle. Um, Iris Silver Mist is skew with Oriental for me, says Dream of Me No More. Interesting. Right. Up next, from, from, from 1998. Take cover, people, because it is the Skankfest. That is Musk Kublai Khan, um, probably as reviled as it is loved. Loads and loads of people hate this and loads and loads of people actually cannot get enough of it. You can see that I've... Bum time. Is that burn time or bum, t bum time, says Ashfaq? Too much information. I adore MKK, says Christine. MKK, oink, oink. <laughs> You can say I haven't used a huge amount because, you know, you really have to go easy on this one. But but I really love it. There's the I love the um, the, the description in the, uh, you know, in the in the black and white um, Tania Sanchez, Luca Turin uh, boxer dropper says, oh, my God, <laughs> please get a room, people. Do you really think this is I actually think, yes, obviously it's it's dirty, but I think more than anything, it's actually cheeky. Um, I guess because because it's so animalic, because it's so fecal, because it's it, because that civet note and those barnyard notes in there are so strong. I think it almost tips over into comedy, um, and it's like the, the image that I used in 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 my book was of, of somebody getting ready to go out or something, and they're doing their ironing in the nude, and there's something. That, that there's something playful about that image and I specifically honed in on ironing because I always get a very very strong steamed feel from Muscoblai Khan. Um, there's, there's something about the treatment of the, um, the, the, the musks that feels like uh, steam rising up to the surface and yes you're, you're you know you're rolling around um, in, in, in the hay with this and, you know, the, the, it's really, really hot and, you know, it's a summer of discovery or whatever you want to call it. But, and, and yet, and yet, there's nothing overly threatening about this or there's nothing overly aggressive. It's, you know, it's not the, it's not the sort of animalic smell of violation. Um, it, 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 it plays its cards right, I think. You, you, you would kind of want to enter into a, a a tryst or a liaison with the smell. You wouldn't, you wouldn't kind of think, okay, I need to back out of here really quick because because my alarm bells are ringing and I'm and I'm sensing trouble. Some perfumes do that. I mean, you know, like Kiehl's Musk, and and this reminds me a lot of Kiehl's Musk. Kiehl's Musk starts heading into dangerous ter territory. This is this is more like the sort of playful, um, you know, like a satyr. Uh, what do you call it? Like Pan, you know, like the like the the god Pan. Um, there's a wicked side to him, but actually you know that 
all he wants to do is just is just have a nice time and and there's going to be mutual pleasure and I, I don't know it, it 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 always makes me smile the 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 the, the grand animalicness of it animality of it always always makes me smile um, and I'm pleased it's still around in the range although again I think it's one of am I right that not the smell of violation a quote for the poster there yeah was that a bit too much do you think <laughs> Well, can you imagine what the smell of violation would be? Maybe that wasn't such a good... I can't take it back now because it's live, but... But, um... I don't know, and, and, and there, there is the, 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 the floral aspect to it as well is... Maybe that's where I'm getting the, 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 the gentleness from. Okay, let's do some more and then what are the final two going to be? Uh, where did we get to? Uh, I must have Iris Silver Mist, says Jonathan. I've been dying to own it and have a hard time finding it, but luckily my very good friend keeps providing me with samples and decants from his many bottles. I'm lucky, I guess. Fair enough. Uh, boxer Dropper comments. Iris Silver Mist with Hamlet is absolutely brilliant. I love that. Well, it works for me. Uh, Denby says, never tried that. Is it urinous animalic or fecal animalic or both? Ooh, fecal, fecal, fecal. You dirty old man. Um, dream, <laughs> dream of me no more says Lolita says is it similar to Shergi no 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 that's you know that's got that sort of cedar thing happening to it the sort of hay tobacco um, Ashwag says imagine wearing Muscoblai Khan on the one hand and Salome on the other oh my god I suppose you mean papillons geez no that that would start heading into the smell of violation uh, is it Darius or Darius says MKK is one of my favorite animalic perfumes I don't blame you Victoria says hello from Eastbourne not very far from here actually Gatsby Nouvelle says I would be curious to see what other literary perfume co co connotations I think you meant not coronations I would love to crown some perfumes um, uh, Peggy says taboo by Dana is barnyardy uh, Moscow Blycon is so rosy and mild on me. Absolutely, there is a floral note in there. I have the export bottle as well. I did a perfume presentation once and brought MKK as a talking point. Everyone loved it. Fair enough. Um, uh, Bala, conversation about Bala Versailles. I'm wearing Bogue Mai today. Have you tried that? Yes, when it came out. And I remember really, really loving it. Beautiful animalic sheep, strong, but probably less than MKK. Night by Acro, says Q George, also plays the similar style for fans of MKK. Interesting. Uh, Victoria says MKK bottle that Mr. Perselais has is the early version and is probably more raunchy than the modern one. Really? Okay. I have MKK Bell Jar bought in 2017. It is not that raunchy. Must have been reformulated. Interesting. Hard to re-smell actually. Uh, sniffy Sniff, you should do a video on stinky perfumes and why people like them. Yeah. Stinky. Top 10 stinky perfumes. <laughs> Mr. Frangipani says, Civet and Caraway with Ombrette in Muscoblai Khan is way better than Kiel's Musk. Oh, I, I absolutely think it's better, but, but sometimes I like wearing Kiel's as well. Okay, so what you are watching is episode 81 of uh, Love at First Scent with me, Persilays. And uh, please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already done so. Please give me lots and lots of likes and thumbs up and hearts and leave questions and ask comments. And please do consider taking a moment to support my work on coffee. You will find the description below. And what we are doing today is looking at the top seven scents from Serge Lutens. And we have to make sure that this video doesn't go over an hour. And we, are, we should be fine because we're down to the last two. And both of them are in bell jars so mm, okay i've picked one up let's do this one it's been mentioned a few times already so i guess a lot of people are going to be very very pleased it is the one and only <laughs> now for something less up your bum thanks for bringing the tone down <laughs> would miel de bois be on that gross list it's in my top five for sure oh let's let's think about the stinky ones another time look at i love the color of this can you can you see how it, I mean, it's a sort of alarming purple, isn't it? It's like ink. This is Saracen or Saracens uh, from Lutens, of course. This one, I'll just give you the date, is uh, from 2007, which makes it the most modern one on the list. This is, oh, I, I'm, I'm really, really perverse when it comes to certain perfumes that I love because I always enjoy wearing them. Um, look, 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 you can actually see the colour that it's made the blotter go. It's extraordinary. The, not um, a scent that you would want to spray on fabric. Um, absolutely not. Please don't drop it. No, it's safe there. I get really weird about perfumes that I love because I adore wearing them and I want to wear them, but I also then want to save them. You know, a little bit like saving your 
best china for best occasions and then you actually end up not using them very much and that's what happens with some of my favorite perfumes but saracen we're back to the jasmine theme but but this is not by any means a jasmine solly floor this is a really really gorgeous um leathery jasmine and again interestingly named you know the fact that it's called um saracens because there is there is something all conquering about it and yet i think you would be quite happy to be invaded by a conquering horde that smells like this because you'd go yeah actually if you guys smell this good you're welcome here anytime taxes yes here current ruler yeah yeah chop their head off it's okay so the jasmine the the jasmine compared to um alanui is nowhere near as as uh as as fresh as open as welcoming this is much more mysterious this is a lot darker although that effect isn't achieved by pumping up um the indoles i guess it's through the inclusion of of the leathery feel the the the, the leather is is quite dry quite tangy there could be an an element of cedar in there it's 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 almost like sheldrake thought you know what would the connection be between jasmines and leathers so how could how it's yeah as in you know I'm, this is pure conjecture but you know maybe he was thinking how can i make um the jasmine darker and maybe make the leather more floral um and you know those um those images that 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 that, that there've been lots of them of people like sort of sticking flowers into into the end of a, of a cannon it's got that sort of feel to it because there is the, the, the leather is somehow violent and the name of course evokes violence but the the floral aspect brings a softness to it and this is really 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 nocturnal um th this could get quite heady you know alan we never get is never over intoxicating it manages to keep things quite gentle Whereas this needs to be dosed quite carefully because um, it could be too much. But oh, I've got some jasmine growing in the garden. You know, I'm I'm not by any means a talented or an instinctive or a natural gardener. I planted it last year and um, it it didn't do very much, probably because I planted it late. But it seems to be doing okay now, and I really, really, really hope we get some flowers. And I'm just hoping that there might be some evenings where you can just sort of sit by by the jasmine and and. Um, and just get this beautiful, beautiful smell. Probably one of my favorite flower smells. Okay, so that was number six. I'm going to do some comments, um, but you've also got to start thinking of making your goodbyes now. And also send me some more ideas, because I am absolutely making a note of all of the ideas for these best of, uh, best of sessions. Kiel's musk is quite mild on my skin, says Ashwag. Ilya says, it's all in the mind. No perfume and all perfume can be stinky. Secretion Magnifique is an extraterrestrial summer perfume to me, for example. Yeah, a lot of people just get the, the, the sort of very clean floral from that. Such a fantastic color, says Talking Sense. Absolutely. It looks like a soapy ink. Uh, Mr. Frangipani, those bottles are beautiful. Remind me of alchemy. Yes, the, the, I, think, I think they're meant to. One of my favorite notes, Jasmine, says Lolita. Eric Brandon says, I absolutely save my favorite perfumes too. I love Saracen, but it's very quiet on me. I usually wear it to bed. Uh, d d d you have to... I don't know how to pronounce whether you say Darius. Of course, there's no way for you, me for you to tell me how it's pronounced. Saracen is on my wish list. You need to try it. Love, uh, Miel de Bois and Voix Noir, says Kenzo25. Frederick says, Saracen is the one I tried long ago. I liked it, but I would never wear it back then. I must revisit as my taste has changed quite a bit. Fernando says, talking about skanky, have you tried Orange Spice by Creed? No. <laughs> Borneo1834 should be on the list, says Kim. Yeah, I, I'd so love it. it that, that would be like number eight, probably. Um, uh, was it uh, hyper patchouli, though? Eric says, there's a lovely hint of Lily of the Valley in Saracen. Yeah, I would go along with that. I think it makes it a bit luminous. He said the C word, says Ashwag. I love burning essen uh, jasmine essential oil. Okay. Muhammad says, I love your videos. Thank you very much. Your favorite from the House of Zoologists would be from Pakistan. Oh, well, let's save that for another time. Um, but I do like uh, B. I did like B, the, the most recent one. Hello, Persile, says 87 Lynn Seed. Hi. Um, De Profundis is so melancholic, it's as if it reminds you of a beautiful soul that is not with you anymore says uh, Cancun Lover. Absolutely. 
Uh, Luca Turin gave De Profundis one star, says Dream of Me No More. He needs a new nose. Well, this, this, is, this really is subjective. This really is subjective. And Dimian One says, have you tried fragrances from the Italian fashion brand Costume Nationale? Yes, but not for a while. Um, and could you re revisit Louis by Garlin? I think I've done a video on that, haven't I? Uh, I, gave, I gave that away to a friend. Uh, please do Mansara House next time. I don't have enough samples of there, sorry. And at the moment, there's there's no way of getting any more. Uh, I've just got to go with what I've got in my collection. Thank you so much for not choosing Araby, says Christine. I would have felt I needed to get my sample out. Well, I'll tell you now, it's not number seven. You don't have to read this out. Oh, okay, fine. I'll just read it to myself. Fernando says, if we're going to agree on something sometime, lol, fine. Okay, and the last one. Um... It, it's been mentioned, uh, but maybe m maybe some people will find this surprising. I have gone, and you know, this is this is a list that I've tried not to overthink. Maybe if I were to make the list again in a month's time, it would be different. You know, maybe maybe Borneo would have got in. This is La Mire, uh, or or the Myrrh, <laughs> you know, just just Myrrh, I suppose. Um, I find this perfume endlessly, endlessly, endlessly fascinating, and I don't want to over intellectualize it with four and a half minutes to go um, because because putting aside um, putting aside intellectualizing it I actually do enjoy smelling it very much and and I love wearing it but it's hard not to intellectualize it because I think that's kind of what I admire about it the most that it, it, it's almost as though I can imagine again Christopher Sheldrake the perfumer this one is from 1995 sitting down and maybe with lutins i don't know and them thinking almost setting themselves a kind of perfumery challenge and thinking that if they could take some of the grand aldehydic florals of of the past the the most prominent example being chanel number no. five if they could take that structure what would they have to do to it to to to, to perhaps take it more to the um to the, to, to, the, to the masculine side of things. Um, in other words, not have florals in it at all, um, but maybe replace it with woods and resins, you know, myrrh in this case. And what you get is a really, really fascinating and, and to, to a great extent, you know, well, I don't want to say unique because nothing is unique, but quite rare um, achievement in perfumery because it has this beautiful, beautiful sparkling altahidic top, um, powdery, luminous, light, you know, bubbles, bubbles er erupting all over you, all around you, and you sort of immediately can't help but think, okay, jasmine, the rose, ylang ylang, we're in sandalwood uh, Chanel number no. five territory, but, but it, 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 it's not like that, it, it, it actually becomes darker, browner, woodier, and starts going into this resinous balsamic territory of, of myrrh and incense. Um, and, and that's what I love about it, the fact that it, that it wrong foots you. It's, um, it's really, really surprising. And what's wonderful about it is that it works on that kind of intellectual perfume geek level, but it, it, it also works as a perfume to wear. Um, when I first smelt it, which I think would have been in the, uh, you know, in the Paris shop, I immediately sort of thought, right, you know, this has got to be on my list because, again, you know, you, it's it's weird what the brain does because you smell it and you go, oh yeah, Chanel number no. five, but not. There was there was talk for a little while, wasn't there? Rumors of Chanel doing a number no. five for men, but maybe they decided that actually there was no point because this this kind of is like Chanel number no. five for men, and of course I say men in inverted commas, because masculinity, femininity are constructs, you know, men can wear Chanel number no. five, women absolutely can wear this. Um, but there we go, that's the seven, and I should quickly do some, uh, uh, quickly, quickly read comments. I, I should sort of say thank you very much. We're not gonna go over the hour and we're almost at the 59 minute mark. All the talk of stinky, dirty smells prompted me to spray a little kouros, says David. 
Uh, Lamir, love it so much, says Kenzo. Persilase is all about leather, incense, and indole, says Ashfaki. Yeah, I probably am, actually. Probably am. Uh, Kura smells just like European bath luxury, David, it says Ilias. Uh, Asta says, thank you for the video. Great list, even though seven search returns is not enough. And thank you very much, Asta, for do I've, nobody's done that before. I haven't seen why. I don't, I, th I think you've sort of contributed to, to, to the channel. Thank you very much. I'm very grateful. <coughs> is Lamir anyhow similar to Aqua de Palma's Colonia Mira? No, 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 because it's like really, really alde <coughs> aldehydic. Okay, we've, I've got to go. Thank you very much for tuning in. The full video description will be up in a few hours after YouTube has finished doing its thing. Please, please, please stay safe. If you're watching the recording, please leave a question, uh, leave a comment, leave a question. And I will see you again very, very soon, I think, uh, certainly within the next two or three days. But take care. Thank you so much for tuning in and for the continued support. Take care. Bye.